I thought I would pass on a little bit of advice to new track day riders or even some experienced ones. If you're a racer, I guess you've worked a lot of this out already, but a lot of it comes off the back of working for the Honda Ron Haslam Race School at Donington Park. Now, incidentally, it's a fantastic school and it's not just aimed at giving people a really nice track experience. It also helps out um, new riders. So you can turn up there if you've never ridden a bike at all in the paddock area, not around the track, uh, and learn basic bike skills. Uh, younger riders who haven't got their license yet can have a taste of what it's like to ride a bike on some of the smaller CBs. Um, and just generally, it's, a, it's an amazing day for everybody. The Ron Haslam isn't just kind of a, a figurehead for the school. He's there the whole time. He's amazing. He, he, he helps us get the bikes out first thing in the morning. He's there setting up the track, setting up the paddock area. He gives bike instruction. He takes people on the back, pillions on his fire blade. Um, the Haslam's give a lot back to the sport. And the school's quite unique in the world, I think, in creating such a, a great experience. There are other race schools around, obviously. Um, and you can get lots of instruction on track days, but I think the Haslam School is quite unique. One of the things that makes it quite unique is um, how safe it is because of the overtaking rules that they've got there. So it's just the school that runs at the track, nothing else. So everybody knows what everyone else is doing. So you can be a fast rider and never get uh, hindered by anybody else, even though you're mixing on track with lots of different abilities. Or you can be an inexperienced rider and not have the fear of being knocked off or lifted up or cut up by somebody else. So, uh, yeah, it's for that reason, it's, it's really good. And a lot of people use it as um, an alternative to a track day. We've got loads and loads of repeat customers there where um, they come along maybe once a month, once every couple of months. And it's kind of a cheaper way of doing a track day. And also because you're getting instructed you just improve the whole time. There's a danger when you do track days of just banging your head against a brick wall and um, not really be, be able to progress. So I instruct on what they call the elite class. So it's all Honda Fireblades and it's one-on-one -on -one with the customer. They're three hour chunks and the bikes are data logged as well. So when we go in and out the pits, we come back in and we, we look at the data and see what's what. And of course, with the data, there's no hiding place for what you're doing. So you can see what gears people are in, how much they're uh, throttling. You can see their speed, their brake pressure, all that kind of stuff, which makes things really interesting as well. Um, but working with so many different people, most of them come from the road. Um, it's very, very easy to tell what they're going to be like within three or four corners. Um, because most people do exactly the same thing. So you can kind of tell from their, their body positions straight off the bat. You can tell the lines they're using, whether they're tight or quite loose. You can tell their kind of speed around the track, even though we're always in front when we're riding and we're always kind of trying to keep a constant gap. We're riding to their speed instead of them riding to our speed just to keep things safe. But um, everybody kind of does more or less the same thing and it's it's a handful of things which i'm going to go through now which isn't the wrong way of doing things because it's understandable people have come from the road and, and you do certain things on the road but but a lot of those things you've kind of got to disregard for the track so the first one's an obvious one body position you've got to kind of get this sorted really before you do anything else when i'm instructing i don't say anything for the first session we kind of normally divide the our three hour chunks into 20 minute sessions four of them and after a couple people are quite tired so it doesn't sound a lot but it actually is when you've got all the instruction and the way you kind of build your session is that you want people to be safe that's the first and foremost thing so the first safe thing to do is think about your body position because if you haven't got a good body position as you progress throughout the laps you'll end up leaning over further and further and basically falling off the edge of your tyres, risk losing the front, risk high siding, um, and the bike won't feel good. So what I see a lot of road riders do is 
The worst case scenario is not move on the bike at all. Be very stiff, sit very upright in the corners, have very straight arms and kind of Charlie Chaplin feet, Daffy Duck feet. Um, and then for the people that have got an idea of body position, many will be um, more concerned about the bottom half rather than the top half of what they're doing. So you have this kind of a lot of this kind of weird twisting movement with with them reaching out with their knee to try and get their knee down, which doesn't really make that much difference on on the lean angle of the bike. You'll end up leaning over further. So the idea with hanging off fundamentally is is firstly to keep the bike more upright in the middle of the corner. So you you're not using big lean because big lean is dangerous. Um, and also to get you over the, the front end of the bike, going into the corner to give the bike more grip and to give you more feel. So to achieve that, if you're gonna forget everything about body position, just remember these two things and they're really useful on the road as well. Just have your inside arm bent in the middle of the corner. So your mid body position, mid corner body position, on the track should be very bent arm. Then the only way to get to that bent arm position is to lean forward. So bend your arms, lean forward, suddenly you'll feel more grip come up through the front tire, up through the forks, up through your hands, through the clip-ons. That's a big plus. And then also with your feet, have your ins, you can ride with your outside foot peg like Charlie Chaplin, but your inside foot, turn your toes in towards the frame. And don't ride right on the, your toes, but kind of ride on your balls of your feet with your toes turned in. And those two things alone will give you much more feel and control. And then after that, it's all the usual stuff that most people know about hanging off. So if you were to divide your body position into two parts, in the middle of the corner, when you're at full lean, the bottom half of your body, you've kind of got one whole cheek, bum cheek, off your seat. You've got your knee out, but not reaching for the ground. It's just kind of dangling there because when you get to a certain lean angle, your knee will go down anyway. So you don't need to reach for it. Um, and then your top half of your body, it's all about getting low on the bike. It's all about getting your arm bent and having your head and shoulders off to the side of the bike. So if you've got mirrors, you kind of, your head's in line with your mirrors. If you haven't, your head's off to the side of the, the bubble. When you do do that, it feels really extreme. But what a lot of customers say to me is that when they finish their riding day and they go and look at their pictures that have been taken of them, they can see that even though they feel that they're hanging off like Marquez, they're still very, very upright. So that's your body position. But one of the most fundamental things is when to get into your body position. So the, the last place you want to be getting into your body position is under braking because you're trying to deal with the braking forces of the bike and it's very difficult to move on the bike. You'll upset the bike when you're braking and it's physically very difficult because you're using all your strength to hang on. So the best time to get into your body position is before the braking zone while there's no kind of big forces on the bike. And the best thing to do is have your bottom half of your body hanging off the bike before you break, you can keep your top half in under the bubble and then when it's time to break you lift up which is really the only time you should ever really be sat up on the bike and then as you approach the corner then you can throw your head and shoulders off and your bum's already off and your foot's already in the right position and then even more crucially coming out of the corner is not to get straight back on so the temptation is as you reach the exit curb is to get straight back on the bike but what you're actually doing by climbing on the bike is leaning it over more at the precise moment where you want to be lifting the bike up. So if you think that there's a relationship between throttle and lean angle, so if you're full throttle, you can be fully upright. And as you lean over, you, you can't have any throttle. So there's always that relationship. So as you come out of a corner, you want to be pushing the bike away from you on the throttle. But if you climb on the bike, you're actually pushing the bike down on the throttle and then you're going to run into all sorts of grip problems. And it also gives you more to do. So in a nutshell, that basically balances out to the fact that even around a big track like Donington, you're never sat in the middle of the bike. You're always either hanging off one way or the other. 
unless you're on a really small bike where you need to get tucked in or you've got a really, really long straight, never sit in the middle of the bike. So we're sat in the right place for the bike. So all of a sudden now we're, we're a little bit safer because you're not using as much lean in the middle of the corners. You've got more feel going into the corner and you're, you've got the bike more stable in the corner exit. So another thing I'll see road riders do, and you can tell this just by looking in your mirrors, is to use the correct gear. So on a big bike like a Fireblade on the road, you're never ever screaming the gears because the bikes are too fast. You, you kind of want a gear that's nice and smooth, nice and comfortable. Big thousand cc road bikes have got a lot of torque, as have most, most bikes, so you don't really need to ever to scream the bikes. So when people come on the track for the first time, they kind of adopt the same approach and use lazy gears because it feels controllable and safe. So you can easily identify that by the fact that when you go through a corner, the person in the lazier gear can't keep quite a tight line. So you'll see there'll be there'll be a little bit off of you, off of your line, it's kind of going more of a U-shaped line than a V-shaped line. And then coming out of the corner, all of a sudden they drop back because they haven't got the acceleration that you've got in a slightly lower gear. So around the track, kind of gears are a useful tool. They help you slow down, they help you keep a good line and they give you best acceleration. But crucially, especially on a big bike like a Fireblade, they keep you safe because the last thing you want to be doing in the middle of the corner is be riding at quite low revs at peak torque because it's that torque force which makes the tyre spin and also on the way out makes the bike wheelie. So if you can be away from peak torque, slightly higher up in the revs, it's got multiple advantages. So number one, the bike's less likely to spin in the first place. Number two, you've got much better connection between the throttle and the engine. So if anything does happen, you can control it instantly. Um, and number three is kind of your own inbuilt trash control. So if the bike does spin, it hasn't got many revs left to go before it fizzles out into the, the red line or the rev limiter. So it's a much safer way of doing it. If you're lower in the gears and you spin, especially if it's wet, the, the engine will spin up. You've got no real control over it and it will go all the way to the red line, stop, the tyre grips, throws you right up into the air. So I would say that is the cause of most crashes at the Ron Haslam Race School is where riders are going through slow corners in high gears at low revs where the bike feels really docile but at some point you're going to run out of grip and then the bike spin out and high side you off even with traction control. Um, so you want to be in lower gears. So at Donington the blades are quite tall geared. You're actually going through the, the corners, gears, uh, unbelievable gears really. So Redgate is second, Crane Occurs is third or fourth, depending on your speed. Old Hairpin is second. Um, and then up through Schwantz is third or fourth. It's kind of low gears like that. Um, the disadvantage is it sounds really violent. It sounds really aggressive and screamy, which is hard to get your head around when you've been riding on the road. But once you're used to using these lower gears, then going back to the lazy gears doesn't feel like you've got much control. So it's a much better thing to, to think about is, is kind of scream the bike and use the gears as a tool to help you get around. There's kind of one exception where you don't need to use screamy gears. And that's when corners open out and you're still on a curve and you, you need to keep accelerating. So a good one there is coming out of the old hairpin and then up through Schwantz, which is kind of a, a fast left. If you stay in the same gear through that long flowing corner, the, the bike will feel too aggressive. You won't be able to go to full throttle. So in that case, you need to short shift, go up a gear or go up two gears, and then you can kind of drive at lower revs. But because you're lifting the bike up as you're doing it, you've still got that good relationship between throttle and lean angle. So this is the absolute 
biggie. This is the technique where if I have a road customer and he's probably 10 or 20 seconds off the average lap pace at Donington, which is about two minutes on the fire blades on sports touring tires that we use because um, you've got to have a tire that will last um, will last for number one and also be good in all conditions because you haven't got time to change to wet or whatever. So, but they're really, really good. We use Dunlop Road Smart threes and they're good enough for quite a fast lap time and also they're good in the wet so they're perfect so what i see a customer do is once we finished our main braking going into a corner we will be going down the straight together we'll break together and then as we turn in suddenly they drop right back but then in the middle of the corner they're right on the back of me almost hitting me but maybe three or four meters off a really baggy line and then suddenly they're a dot in my mirrors again as we accelerate off so they after their main braking zone they're slow fast slow um, and we want to make that the opposite way so as an instructor you kind of think to yourself well you know if someone's out um, far off the pace and they're already riding at a level where they if they went any faster they wouldn't be comfortable what you're going to say to them and by adopting this approach people will lop five seconds off their lap time 10 seconds 20 seconds half a minute it is the biggest difference between riding on road and track so a lot of riders either break too early or they think that they should break really, really late because that's what racers do, and they do. But what comes after that is the most crucial thing because it's not about when you break, it's about when you let the brakes off. So for a rider that's braking early, will brake early and then they'll accelerate through the corner. Um, and for a rider that's braking so late, his eyeballs are on stalks and touching the back of the visor. They will brake late but panic so much that they won't have any corner entry speed and they've got to accelerate through the corner. So accelerating through a corner is what we're taught to do on the road. And the reason we do that is because we want to give ourselves some wiggle room for anything that might happen around a corner that we can't see. So you need to be going into a corner at a speed where you can easily stop or take avoiding action if anything happens or if there's gravel on the road or whatever. But on the track, that's not such a good approach because if you're accelerating through a corner, first of all, you're accelerating through a corner as you're kind of leaning through it. So you're ruining that relationship between throttle and lean. You're stressing the tire out as you're going through the corner because you're asking the bike to lean and handle the power you're trying to put through it. When you get on the gas mid corner or on the approach of a corner, all a bike wants to do is sit up. So you're fighting, getting the bike through the corner and fighting it to the apex. And then because you're on the throttle, you're pushing the bike into the tarmac and you're ruining all your ground clearance. And then you've got rubbish exit speed. So that kind of powering through a corner approach is what I say I can see in my mirrors so it's a slow entry but then a fast mid corner and then a really slow exit so what we say is break break at a comfortable point don't don't be the last of the late breakers almost break a little bit earlier than you would do but then once you've break braked don't hit the throttle until you're at least on the apex or on some corners a little bit after. So when we ask customers to do that, what you'll find is they can't even reach the corner of the throttle. They're going too slow on the entry. So they've got to accelerate through. So then what we suggest is lap on lap. When you brake, just let the brakes off, just bleed them off a little bit earlier, a little bit earlier, just really, really gradual and just let the bike flow into the corner. And eventually when they get the hang of it and you can get all the way into the corner off the throttle, and then suddenly you've opened up a whole new world of riding. 
you'll find that the bike steers much, much better because you're not trying to, it's not trying to lift up on the throttle. It grips a lot better because you're only asking it to lean. You're not asking it to grip as well. You'll hit every single apex every time easily because all you're doing is steering the bike. Um, and then because you've hit the apex so easily, you can lift the bike up earlier and you can accelerate faster down the straight. So kind of what that feels like in um, when you've got the hang of it will be you're accelerating down the straight, you brake and then you start to lean in. So maybe brake to half lean. Maybe you don't even need to do that, but start to bleed on bleed off the brakes. You bleed off the brakes and you stay off the throttle all the way till you reach the apex, hit the apex, crack the throttle to balance it, lift the bike up and then you're going. So that's opposed to down the straight, ah, brake, ah, you've scrubbed off too much speed, turn in, straight on the throttle, because everyone thinks you should be um, brake throttle, brake throttle, brake throttle. But there is a point where you are, you've kind of got a neutral zone. So the reason racers say that is because they'll brake all the way to the apex. So they're braking and then accelerating. Whereas I would say from a track rider's point of view, track day rider's point of view for the road, you brake, but then there is kind of some kind of neutral zone as you're turning in. And then you get best acceleration down the straights. So the way I try and show customers this is by riding that way myself at a slower speed. But what you quite often find is when you're not doing the technique, it's quite hard to keep up. So they'll use that part of the corner where I'm slow to catch up and then they do catch up mid corner but then suddenly because they're in the wrong place mid corner going too fast at the wrong lean angle you can come out the corner and absolutely be almost half a straight away while they're still collecting the bike out of the corner so you know if you're ever in a track day environment where you're being instructed and this works really well on the road as well I always say go into the corner with with the same gap and then you'll come out of the corner of the same gap so if you're on a road ride and you're you're riding swiftly it is very tempting to try and nibble people on the brakes but then you'll find they'll accelerate harder out the corner and you get yourself in a situation sometimes when you're riding over your head and everything's too aggressive everything feels dodgy you'll be pushing your luck and then you know something bad could happen so follow somebody in at the same gap and then you'll come out exactly the same gap. And that's how really we try and guide our customers to carry the correct amount of corner speed, which is generally a lot lower than people would imagine. So this is probably the easiest and most effective way to go fast around the track. What you see in your mirrors when you're going down the straight, especially at Donington, that, that fast straight, is that you'll leave people behind down the straights. And it's kind of understandable because when you're riding on the road, despite the bravado of what some people might say, you'll never full throttle on a big super bike like a Fireblade. You're, you're tickling it most of the time. So it's quite, um, quite a novel experience going to a track for the first time and actually using full throttle. And a lot of people will rev the bikes out and feel like they're getting everything out of the engine but they'll be doing it on kind of a gradual throttle. So the bike revs quite slowly. And when you come back into the pits and you show them the data and you ask what throttle position they've been using, they'll say, yeah, I was definitely full throttle down there. But generally, people are using like 25%, 35%, 40%, 50%. The brave ones, maybe 70 or 80. So, that is the most easy way of finding speed on the track. So while people come to the school and understandably want to know how to brake better, how to corner better, body position, all this kind of stuff that's going to help them go through corners faster, that may gain them half a second or a second. They're not using full throttle down the straights. And just by doing that, you might gain four seconds or five seconds. So what we say is to get people used to using full throttle, is 
pick the two, pick the big straights. So at Donington, you've got two, you've got the back straight and the front straight. And then aim to, once you're past the exit curb, so coming onto the back straight at Donington, you've got an exit curb, which kind of runs quite far into the straight. Once you're past that, your bike is more or less upright and it's safe to go full throttle. So just experiment that through the gears, just through one of the gears. So if you're coming out in second or third, just get the throttle so you can feel it on the stop, even if it's for a second. But just get that feeling, get that feeling. And you start to get used to kind of the violence of the bike, really. There's no easy way of putting it. Bikes are fast. And if you want a good lap time, you've got to push them and they feel violent. That, that gets people used to using full throttle. And because you've taught them about braking and body position and gears and all the rest of it, you now know that you don't need to be the last of the late breakers. You now know that when you, when you finish braking, you're off the throttle. You're not doing anything scary. You're not going to run off the track. That gives people confidence for that short blast down the straight to actually go full throttle. And then suddenly you see people's lap times tumble. And really, that is the secret to going fast around the track. It's it's making every straight count, even if it's a tiny little straight. So because you've got through the corners better, because you turn tighter, because you've lifted the bike up the corner, you can get full throttle easier. And you've got to think of a track really like lots of small little drag strips and every little drag strip counts and then you feel a flow you feel this flow of accelerating hard break and then it's really serene into the corner come out onto the next straight break serene and it's kind of that nice flow that nice kind of feeling that you're floating and it's that feeling when people say that you know when they do their fastest laps it's it's it does it feels easy you know and that's the reason because you're not pushing hard in the corners you're just making the bike work down the straights and that's where you're going to get the most gains so they're the main things i would say uh, to look out for when you go on the track for the first time and a lot of those things tie into what i've said about road riding as well you know this whole thing about not using all your tire hopefully now you can see why there's no need to carry that so much corner speed in the middle of the corner or lean angle. There really isn't. I mean, we can keep up with sports bike riders on gold wings and stuff like that. Never, never ground out just because you, you, you're doing the right thing in the right part of the corner. Um, and also that body position thing on the road is good as well. Just just to as you're going through corners, not to hang off, but just to sort of go from bum cheek to bum cheek just on the seat stationary and to bend your inside arm slightly, you don't have to go mad, and to have your foot in the right position, you don't have to go mad, all helps your road riding. So of course there's loads and loads and loads of other stuff to learn about lines. I mean, we don't teach lines so much at the school because the uh, customers are following us anyway. And there's loads and loads of tips and tricks that you know you could find out if you came on the school, but also everywhere else. So some, some of the best instructional videos and books and DVDs and all that kind of stuff. I would say Simon Crayfar's Moto Voodoo is absolutely excellent. The way he articulates fast riding and the way he's able to, to demonstrate what to do is, is incredible. Also, you've got Sylvain Gintoli. He's starting to do um, YouTube tutorials, which is amazing that a current MotoGP rider would uh, give away his skills like that. So that's really worth watching. Uh, and also things like track guides. Mike Edwards is does some really, really good track guides that I've used to my advantage before. So check them out. So that's it. In a nutshell, if you can get your body position, gears, corner entry and kind of throttle control down the straights sorted, I would say you're kind of 80% there and you're going to have a much more fun, much faster, much safer time on track.